Now imagine that as the developmental environment for children. Now here's, here's the connection I want to draw. My contention is that the online landscape is postmodern, right? That if we were just to simply describe it, the rules, the physics of online life are postmodern. So I have to say this was a very interesting observation and one which I agree with where Brett Weinstein is referring to the internet and the laws of the internet as postmodern. Now what this means, and we see this happening, right? We see this happening every single day. The internet is deconstructing us, literally. And what I mean by this is that you go online and almost instantaneously you're presented with an opportunity to reinvent yourself, right? You go on, you create this avatar, this person that isn't you in a way, in many ways. And it's also a place where you can, there are no inhibitions. You can say what you want, you can believe what you want, you can preach what you want, you can, you know, criticize as you wish, you can reject things at will. It's, it's a place where anything goes. And this is very dangerous. And I've seen like, especially over the past year, so many young Muslims who are completely confused in regards to their identity. They don't know who they are. They don't know what defines them anymore. They don't recognize themselves. They are in doubt. They have confusion. They are, some have even gone as far as saying, well, is anything worth believing? Now here's why this is a real big issue for Muslims. Aren't we people who are supposed to have been blessed with and have acknowledged the truth of reality? Aren't we people that have recognized and understood what life is all about, the meaning of life and how we are to live? And if this is the case, then why are we also succumbing to this reality? Well, for one, it's just the nature of the internet. It's, it's, it's just that type of beast that it opens the doors and it gives you this type of, this perception of power that you can go online and you can do as you wish. It's almost like being under the influence of alcohol in some regards. It's a type of escapism. And especially if you're someone as a Muslim, as a young Muslim that hasn't really figured out your core. And I'm going to talk about the core in a second, what I mean by the core. But if you haven't figured things out properly as a Muslim and grounded yourself, well, then it's a very dangerous place to be. And even for those that have grounded themselves to some extent, even for them, it's, it's a very difficult place to navigate. So what do I mean by the core? What I'm referring to the core as is your foundation, your foundational set of axioms and beliefs. Something, by the way, which every single human being needs. Without a core, without a worldview, a set of foundational, basic, axiomatic beliefs, life is chaos. You can't make sense of anything. You'll be in a perpetual state of confusion, anxiety, frustration. You won't know yourself. You won't have any real sense of self. So as Muslims specifically, we have to remember, we have to remind ourselves that our core is not one that we devise ourselves or that's given to us by other people. It comes from the, the divine reality. It comes from God himself. So not only is it important first and foremost for us to really discover and come to terms with our core, which is fundamentally acknowledging the existence of God, which is axiomatic. It's fitri, as we say. It's a part of the fitra, the natural disposition of human beings. And from that stems everything else. And also an integral part of the core is to recognize our reason for being as outlined by this divine reality, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to know Him and to worship Him. And I've emphasized this ayah so many times and there's such an integral ayah of the Qur'an, verse of the Qur'an that we have to come to terms with. Where Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That He did not create us for any other reason except to know Him and to worship Him. Right? To know Him and to worship Him. It's our existence, the purpose of our existence fundamentally is about our relationship with our Creator. Not only is this important, so the first step is recognize conceptually, theoretically, what the core is, according to Islam. Recognize this reality, come to terms with it. But secondly, and as important, I, I believe it's as important, this, the, the, what the next step is, which is to value 
your core. Understand the value of this core. And this is fundamental because when we don't value things, we give things up very easily. We let things go. And that's what we see happening today. But when you understand the value of this core that Islam provides us with, how it allows you to make sense of the meaning of life, how it allows you to make sense of morality, how it allows you to make sense of this life and the hereafter, how it allows you to literally make sense of your entire reality, the world around you. And you see people that don't have this and the consequences of that, then you will really start to value what you have as your core. So the steps, first step is acknowledge the core. Second step is to value your core. The third step is then to live by your core. And again, this is something, I mean, you see this with public intellectuals today. They always refer back to religion and tradition and rituals. And they understand the value of these things. And these, most of these individuals don't even believe in God. And I'll probably do a separate video on this soon. But they really understand the value of ha having a tradition. A, a core which you live by. You dedicate yourself to. And how that gives your life meaning. How it makes life worthwhile. But unfortunately as Muslims we haven't really understood this. And we haven't really appreciated that our core, our foundations, our axioms come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So come to terms with the core, value the core, and then start living by it. And that's what's going to make your life meaningful. And even then, when you do go on the internet, when you do go on social media, you still have to be very conscious of, of how you act and, and what you do online. And try to be as authentic as you can to yourself and to your core, to your fundamental beliefs. And if you do these things, brothers and sisters, and anyone else that's watching, if you really do these things, this is going to help you immensely as far as staying true to your identity, staying collaborated, and really even, even going as far as fulfilling your core purpose, your purpose in life, through the use of the internet. So there's just a few things I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, take care. Assalamu alaikum.